Hello everyone, and welcome back to the history of the Jebus dynasty, where last time Emperor Flame managed to destroy the Byzantine Empire, breaking it into a series of much smaller states after taking the core lands in Greece, Italy, and Constantinople itself. Although this cost him prestige, breaking a truce in the process, it pushed the Jebus dynasty towards one of their ultimate goals of claiming authority over the original Roman Empire. And so now we look at Emperor Flame's second half of his life as he pushed towards this goal which required reclaiming much of the territory of the Roman Empire. Emperor's Flame's first move in this new phase of his plan involved a declaration of war against Croatia to subjugate them. And to crown his new achievement, Emperor Flame had commissioned a brand new tapestry. Emperor Flame's tapestry would now hang on the wall over the Imperial Court. Major battle of this war was fought at Garrison in which 5,000 Croatians were killed. And after a series of rapid sieges, the war was brought to a close, and King Alido was forced to swear fealty to Emperor Flame. Next would be the Kingdom of Anatolikon. Not all of the old Byzantine territories had to be conquered, the Duke of Thessaly peacefully swore allegiance, as did the Count of Kinisarin. Two major battles were then fought at Latakia, in which a total of 23,000 men were killed, the entirety of the Anatolian forces. As this invasion was ongoing, the new Pope, Pope Victor III, called for a holy war against Wallachia. Although this was a bit of a distraction for Emperor Flame, he still pledged his troops to be ready for the invasion. And the destruction of the Anatolian armies and the Jebus troops laying siege across Asia Minor, despot Philanthros was forced to bend the knee, adding all of the south of Asia Minor to Emperor Flame's growing realm. Then came a short break in the fighting as Emperor Flame prepared for holy war. With the influx of influence from the east, the cultural traditions shifted once more, Tyrrhenian and Greek culture blending together to form the Nova Roman culture. New age and a new people combining Norman, Italian, African, and Greek culture. Shortly after this, the Duke of Edessa swore loyalty, as did the Duke of Opskilian. In June 1339, the Holy War was declared, and troops from all around the world started marching towards Wallachia. The war was a hectic war, with the Balkans divided between Catholic and Orthodox, and multiple armies ravaging the land. Flames troops won a vactyl at Kalasari, defeating 2,000 Orthodox. Then the defining battle of the war was fought at Cosenti, where 160,000 Catholics were arrayed against 60,000 Orthodox. Casualties were high on both sides, but the Catholics held the field. This was followed by a more one-sided battle at Ayatomila, where 20,000 Orthodox troops were killed. And then a series of battles to mop up the remainder of the Orthodox troops put an end to the war. King Vratslav took the new throne. With this distraction over, Flame turned his attention back to the despot of Georgia, who held significant lands in Croatia and Thrace. 
several battles were then fought at Maraca, with the Georgian forces still deployed following their involvement in the crusade, but low on supplies became easy pickings for the Jebus army. With the flourishing of the new hybrid culture, Jebus custom was passed down to respect traditions of other groups, increasing cultural acceptance throughout the empire. After two years of fighting, the Georgian despot was finally forced to give up his lands in the west. And with this final war, Flame now had claims over a sufficient portion of the ancient Roman Empire to declare the Holy Roman Empire the true inheritors of Rome. And so the Roman Empire was re-founded by Basilius Flame, the Eucumenist of the Holy Roman Empire, also now known as Augustus, Emperor of Rome. The Roman Empire stretched from France through to Egypt, but there were many lands once within the Roman Empire which needed to be reclaimed. Flame's work was not yet done. The new imperial capital would move to Rome itself. Now charged with handling the Roman Empire both east and west, Flame became adept at serving as an administrator. Flame would spend the rest of his life focusing on diplomacy, keeping his large empire together. After throwing a grand wedding for his son and heir Leapbird, in 1343, Flame turned his attention to other previous imperial provinces that needed to be brought back into the fold, starting with Serbia. First battle of this war was fought at Dukla and was a victory for the Roman forces. Second major battle at Vranduk destroyed a third of the remaining Serbian army. And another battle at Deburk destroyed much of the remaining Serbian army, along with an army of their allies from the north. And following the fall of the Serbian capital, the Serbian king was forced to bend the knee to the growing Roman Empire. Smolensk and Thracian were then brought into the empire peacefully, along with the Count of Berograd. Duke Ionis of Drobrodja peacefully entered the empire, giving Romans control of the entire west coast of the Black Sea. Next, Flame would turn on the Despotissa of Pontus to bring her back into the fold. Massive battle was fought at Garanga between 150,000 men. The Romans kept the field, killing five times the number they lost. Further victories at Kerasus and Azia helped damage the enemy morale and push Pontus towards capitulation. A series of battles swinging one way and the other, exacerbated by supply issues, dragged the war on, as much of the Roman army had to retreat south to resupply. But finally, after a number of key points were taken, victory was declared. All of Asia Minor was now back under Roman control. The next Despacita to be targeted was Iuna of Cyprus. The opening battle of this war at Kilica saw the entire Cyprus army being destroyed. And with the fall of all castles within Cyprus months later, Cyprus was forced to join the Roman Empire. 
Now only a single island stood between flame and complete control over the entirety of the Mediterranean. Crete would be next. Flame only sent his personal guard and the Knights Templar to Crete. As they came ashore, they slaughtered 3,000 Cretan defenders for a loss of only 30 men. The sieges of the castles did not last long. Within five months of declaring war, Crete entered the Roman Empire. The entirety of the Mediterranean was now under Jebus' control. With the Mediterranean secure, Flame turned his attention towards Nar Navarra, wanting to weaken the kingdom that was blocking his domination of Western Europe. To begin with, he pushed Duke Centulo's claims on the Duchy of Austria. But days after declaring this war, while the troops were still gathering, Basilis Flame of the Roman Empire died. His decades of drinking caught up to him at the age of 87, where he drank himself to death. A living legend and a religious icon, Basilis Flame would always be known as the man who reunited the Roman Empire under one banner and under Catholic rule. He had become an architect, avaricious and an administrator, and had fought in a total of 22 wars. He would be succeeded to the throne of Rome by his 33-year-old son, Latebird. Latebird took the throne in 1349 on the 14th of November. He already had two children, a daughter, Tament, and his son and current heir, Flame. Handsome, a genius and robust, young Prince Flame was very promising. His father was still a genius and hale, but he didn't take inspiration from his recent ancestors, but reached further back to those of his predecessors who were great generals. He graduated university as a brilliant strategist and had become known as a famous champion. He had taken part in the Holy War and so was a noted crusader, and was also gregarious, generous and just. But the story of Emperor Latebird's reign will be a story for next time, as he will try to continue his father's work in expanding the Roman Empire to completely match its previous glory. For now though we end that here, so thank you all for watching and farewell.